And this will be just a little preview of what I'm working on with the color separations for screen printers. I'm going to cover everything. And I'm going to get into color itself and understanding it and how it works and why, because that's critical to working with the separations in any mode, working with your inks, working with vector, working with everything. And the foundation is very easy to understand. I'm going to go through it right here in the next five to 10 minutes. And you'll find that even this information is very interesting and valuable. And the things that I'll get into the training will take it far beyond all of this. But I just want to lay a little quick foundation so you can see what I'm working on and why it's so important. And I can tell you that it makes all the difference in the world for me, both in screen printing and as a graphic artist. Start with the visible spectrum of color as we know it, what our eyes perceive in the natural realm. You can see that goes from purple to blue, or you could call this violet, but it's really more of a purple. Blue, cyan, green, yellow, red. Now you can see there's different gradients here. You can see a gradient of the yellow, the green, the cyan, the blue, and the purple. Now, whenever you get into a graphics application or a digital photograph, that color is moved into digital color. Now, one thing you notice, digital color has magenta. That color is here. That's because magenta is a color that's not in the visible spectrum of color, but your brain makes it up. And you can look on YouTube, magenta doesn't exist, and you'll see and understand why. So you won't see that here, and that's why it has to change when it's brought into digital color. Now, this is where most of the software applications absolutely miss it. They don't understand that there's a change between here and here. And so they try to work based on this understanding when they should be working on this understanding because the color has changed when you're dealing with it digitally. The main point is to think of color as components. Just like when you look at a vector graphic, you're looking at the color that's in it, that's the color components of the vector graphic. Images are the same, they have color components. Our basic components are that we have the pure color, then we have tint, shade, tone, those four. Then there's white, gray, black. They don't have color. So in total, there's seven possible states you could be dealing with when you're looking at color, white, gray, and black. That's all just seven simple math. This is all as easy as simple math, and we'll get into that in just a minute here. Now, looking at this, I've got the 100... 20 degree gradient that's making the 360 degrees of pure color that we deal with in digital color. And you can see that up here. This has been broken into 360 degrees in digital color and magenta has been added. So you come down here, 360 degrees of pure color, there's the magenta. Different than the visible spectrum of color because it's digital color. So we handle it digitally, therefore it can be dealt with mathematically like very simple math. And I'm moving fast now, but I'll slow down when I get into the training. I'm just laying some understanding here. So here we have the 360 degrees with 12 color components. This is the pure color, not the tint, shades, or tones. We'll get into that in just a second. And here's the orange color component. There's the pure orange in the, center, in the center and then two gradients, one to the left and one to the right, going to zero, blending into the red and the yellow. Now that's done with a blend mode of subtract in digital color. You can see this is just a transparency applied to that. I'll hit Control Z and we'll move that back. So that's your blend mode in the computer for blending the colors. It's subtract. The blender merge modes are very powerful and you can use them for amazing things. So we really want to come to the basic understanding color as components. Color components are like simple math. It's not hard. There's nothing mystical about simulated process, believe me. Um, here I've got two simple color components, red and yellow. I get all of these colors out of it. Now, there would be that plus all the tints of the red and the yellow. So there'd be quite a bit of color in here. But you look at the red, pure red, reddish orange, 75% red plus 75% yellow. Percentages of two color components. Thinking com componentially. You come down here and you can see the gradient right here. Here's the red, here's the yellow. And here's the tints, and you can find the tints down in here. Two components, very easy. Then we bring into the pure color the introduction of white, gray, and black. 
So everything that you look at with your eyes is going to come back to you as either a pure color. Most of it's going to be a tint, tone, or shade, or white, gray, and black. Not too many things come back as pure color. Some do, but not many. So when we get to that, we go and we understand that we have the pure color, the 12 components or six components. I prefer printing simulated process with six components, but you can use any of these components in the actuality because images can have different color components and we'll cover that. So we're getting into the simplicity. Okay, the basics of any color, it could be any color, but this is red. You add white, you get a tint. It's that simple. Red plus white, you get a tint. One plus two equals three, tint. Here we have three components or two components. Red plus white and black or gray gives you a tone. Red plus black gives you a shade. So now we have pure color, tint, tone, shade, white, gray, black. Just seven states a color can be in. And it's good to understand that and it's easy to understand. Now, down here, I get into how these work, and they're in 10% increments, but here's the red tints. Well, you could look at that and say, that looks like a pink, or that looks like a pink, or that looks like a pink. But really, what is it? It's a tint of red, or a tint of magenta, or a tint of rose, and you would understand that. You come over here and say, this looks like a brown. Well, what is that? That's a color component. That's comprised of two color components, which would be orange and black, or a shade of orange. Which you would have two different ways you could create that in screen printing. Mixing some orange ink with some black ink, or mixing some black halftones with some orange halftones. And I'll get into all the halftones and stuff later. So when we get into componential thinking, we kind of put aside what they call colors. We want to think in components so we understand what's really going on with the color. For example, you look at this and you say, well, this looks like a burgundy or a maroon in here. But from a color reprographic standpoint, you really want to think in components and say, well, that's a black, a, a red shade. This is an orange tone, even though it looks like a light brown or a tan. This hot pink is actually a magenta tint. Once again, you can create that through mixing a magenta ink with white, if it's going to be a spot color, or if you're doing half tone printing to simulate that color, then it would be white half tones with magenta half tones. Because in screen printing, your blend mode, like here we have in the computer, the blend mode is the subtract merge mode. In screen printing, your blending mode is your half tones, and I'll cover all of that in the training. Come down here, understanding gradients. Here's the red gradient, here's the yellow gradient. It's going out through density. Here's 50%, here's 25%, here's 0%. If I slide the yellow component and its gradient into the red, I'm going to get an orange. Now I can do the same thing with halftones, and this is set up as a subtract merge mode or blend mode in Photoshop. In the screen printing, your merge or blend mode, as I said, is halftones. Very easy to understand. Now if I go and bring some black in here, I get my shades. If I bring some gray in here, I have my tones. Here are my tints fading out into the white. So images as color component gradients. And just like those gradients that I showed you up there that were straight, the vector objects, these are gradients based on the bitmap image. And here's the color, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, black. Now, not all images have all these colors, and you have to be aware of that. So you need to be able to look at images and determine what colors are in them, what color components you'll be dealing with because everything's a color component in screen printing and graphic arts, as far as color is concerned. And then we have applied the colors, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, and black. Now here I have the image, which I separated in Corel into its components. There's the black. There's the magenta. There's the blue, there's the cyan, the color components. They're all brought back together and then merged into or blended to each other and they're identical. Now these color separations are perfect. 
and if they're halftone printed correctly, they'll come out highly accurate. So color components are the same really as color channels used in the image editing software. Here we can see cyan, magenta, yellow, black. These are the color components. That's the color separations for CMYK coming out of an image editing program. But we can work with this very differently because we're screen printers, we're not device printers. We can mix any color and then print with that color. We can print more than just with four inkjet heads. We're not tied into a device as screen printers. So we can work with our blend mode, which is our halftones and the different colors and inks that we can mix and reproduce things with much less colors or much more colors, depending on how you want to work. And I'll scroll down here and here I've got a vector graphic and here I've got a raster or bitmap graphic. Now, this is what you want to understand. Even said it's easy components, thinking easy components, and I'll get all of this in training. This is a vector graphic. What do we have? We have the number 21 racing type sports design. That's a color component. That's a tone of purple. What's this? This is a shade of purple. Then we have black here and black here. Color components in the vector graphic. It's the same with raster. What do I have here? There's the black component. There's the magenta component. There's the blue component. Color components. They just work differently. They have different gradients than vector. But basically it's the same thing. It's color components. So really the secret is to come to a place you understand that you're dealing with color components and how they work in digital color on your computer. And I'll get into all of that in the training. And I've really got everything I need. I've got everything on the half tones, different type of half toning. It's already all spelled out. The ins and outs and whys. Things like ink coverage, really important. That will affect things like reflectance. The color you see in your computer is the color that's being emitted to you. The color you see on a t-shirt is the color that's being reflected. So your half toning is critical because you want to optimize your color reflectance. You want as much brightness or reflectance of color or light coming off of that print is possible and accurate half toning is the only way to get the best possible results with that with that and break down the color miles for you and then I'll get into I'm working on this now different types of color separations and things like white bases trapping spreading choking etc and really covering it all and I'm kind of excited about this because no one's ever put all of this together in one place. And I've got really all the stuff to put all this together. So it shouldn't take me more than two or three weeks to have this all together. And then you can really enter a level of understanding of what you're dealing with relating to color, no matter what you're dealing with, from vector to bitmap images to grayscale to on and on. Um, and I'll, I'll have it all broken down into very easily understandable stuff because it's not hard to understand. It took me years to, figure, to get my mind through all of the muck that's in the understanding of this and get to the place where I can understand it in simple terms, which is really just getting into color components and we'll get into, you know, what are the components of color separations, half tones, you know, registration marks and everything so that you really have a solid understanding of working with color. And this will also be um, a free training series. I'm not going to charge for it. I'll set it up on YouTube and on my website. Anyway, just a quick peek at what I'm working on here. And I'm going to enjoy this. I've been waiting a long time to do it, and I think it's time to do it.